Hello everybody and welcome to Crazy Horse Gaming and our Star Wars week. This is the third video in our Star Wars week series. A series in which we go through as many different games as we can in the Star Wars universe for an entire week. As the title kind of suggests. And today we are doing Star Wars The Force Unleashed. Star Wars The Force Unleashed was developed by LucasArts and Chrome Studios, depending on what version you bought. And again, published by THQ Wireless and LucasArts. I said depending on what platform you bought, because this game was out on nearly everything. From PlayStation 2, 3, Wii, Xbox 360, iOS, mobile phone platforms, Nintendo DS, PlayStation Portable, Microsoft Windows and Mac. So it was out on quite a few things. And it was released from September 2008 all the way through to December 2009 on the different platforms. As you can see, Star Wars Force Unleashed is a very cinematic video game. It uh, ties in the bridge between the two trilogies, so where the end of Star Wars Episode 3 ended and Star Wars Episode 4, uh, based just before Luke Skywalker comes into the story and all that guff. Uh, this is basically Darth Vader falls across a young boy who's gifted in the Force, who he calls, who later gets the name, Starkiller, and becomes Vader's secret apprentice. Uh, he trains him with, obviously, the goal of overthrowing the Emperor and ruling the galaxy himself. And basically uses, obviously, Starkiller as a tool for this goal. Uh, they've gone on all out here to try and make it look like it belongs in the Star Wars universe as well. A film for one of the movies, very cinematic, huge musical uh, scores as if they've come straight out of the actual films themselves. Great cutscenes, great Jedi battles, uh, as you can see here with him fighting the robot which appeared to him as Obi Wan, his uh, training droid. Uh, yeah, it was a great story, uh, really well written story. And the game itself plays really well. It's a third person style game. You basically go around wielding your lightsaber, taking out anything and everything you come across. You really do. Uh, one of the big th selling points with this game was the physics engine they developed for it. Uh, they, they made a physics engine which meant that or ideally no two characters would react the same. You, the enemies you fought on that would panic as you attacked them. Um, uh, clever little things like when you were force choking them, you'd see them grabbing for the throats and things like that. They were acted as real as they could get them to act at that time. And it really was an impressive thing. When you'd chuck things, you'd see things flying and bouncing off all over the place. Uh, as you'll see later on in the game, as we're going, you see when you, you can actually pick people up and chuck them, how they'll react. The physics engine works really well on this. And despite its age, the game still looks really good. Uh, yeah, really well made game. The controls on it leave a little bit to be desired for, to be honest. Uh, it's not the easiest game to get to grips with the controls. Sometimes it can be a bit frustrating. There's uh, a lot of quick time events running in this, so you'll be fighting enemies and quick time events will come up, which... Uh, I can't really decide if I'm keen on or not. I do think quick time events get or used an awful lot in video games but I also believe that in a time and a place they can actually improve video games as well. Uh, luckily this doesn't depend on them too heavily, you know, more on the, the, the larger enemies and things like that. As you can see this whole intro part here is very uh, cinematic heavy, it does take quite a bit before you uh, get into the video game. I have cut a few bits out of this so it doesn't exactly run like this as I'm sure you've seen the editing and I speeded up the intro a bit to get to the points where you see yourself as Starkiller and here we are so as you can see f uh, third person view here uh, running around with the old lightsaber there which is fully customizable as you go along through the game you can change the lightsaber lightsaber's colour uh, I'm not quite sure if it changes the effects I don't think it does you can increase the strength uh, of the lightsaber, I believe. Uh, can't really remember. It's been a while since I last played this. So we'll go back to it. As you can see there, blowing doors open with the force push. One of the um, things that you come across a lot in here is having to use the force for many different things. From blowing doors open to chucking things at the enemies. Like so. There we are, dead stormtroopers. Well, 
a few dead, and then you finish them off. And you see there, you collect your health from the enemies as you kill them. The green orbs represent health. Tear that door open like it's a piece of paper there. Some of the physics in this were really impressive, and I was really blown away when I first played this game. There we are. Squish a few more stormtroopers. So yeah, as you go along, as you can see me there using the force to throw stormtroopers around and destroy TIE fighters. You know, these dudes are really overpowered. And, uh, Sith Lord. Well, not Sith Lord, sorry, Sith Apprentice. And you see me not having a great deal of success there trying to take that TIE fighter down. But really cleverly done the way this was. Uh, as you can see, the, the ability to throw people as you go along, you develop more abilities like the the electrocution ability. So the, the, the Sith Lightning that the Emperor's famous for, you get to use that, which is quite impressive. Uh, there's uh, several different types of enemies on this as well. You've got your, your standard troopers, your heavy troopers. You've got troopers which can resist force powers, troopers that can resist your lightsaber. So involve the... Uh, later on tactics do come into the game because you've got to figure out obviously how to attack one and attack won't work on the other so you learn how to beat that person but then they'll start mixing them together so certain attacks will work on one but not on the other and then it kind of keeps the, the combat fresh and interesting the combat on this is quite a fast paced combat as well got a bit lost here but not to worry on my way back I believe if I'm not mistaken, this is one of the instances where the controls... Oh no. I must have edited that bit out. Sometimes the, the controls can be a bit awkward at times that you can't really... Uh, you do tend to muck up some of the moves in that because of either camera angles or just awkward controls. You think you've made a jump and you haven't. Which can be a bit frustrating at times, but all of all, not a huge problem. Ha! Ah, Leveling up screen. So you can see that you can level up your lights or you can alter your lightsaber. This is another problem, is like the, the loading screens whenever you try to go into the menus. So yeah, as you can see there, you can change your crystals, which give it different properties and obviously colours. Everyone likes to change the colours of the lightsabers. You can also change the costumes of the dude if you unlock costumes as you go along. So there's like Sith robes, Jedi robes, Starkiller's ultimate armour, which looks nasty as hell. As you can see, this is where you can upgrade your powers. So you can upgrade, or like you see, your force push, your force grip, unlock force lightning, lightsaber throw. There's another cool little trick you can do there. Is chuck the lightsaber, which I think is featured in quite a quite a few of the uh, Star Wars games of the past, and they still continue to use it in the, the present Star Wars games as well. I do believe uh, they did do a sequel to this, and all the Force Unleashed two. Which I may be doing a video on after this one. It's uh, another really good game. But you know, we'll concentrate on this one for now. So you can see that's where you upgrade your your abilities and things like that. Force throw, force lightning. That's how it's kind of just gone through. You see the combat's quite fast paced and uh, combo based as well. The great things is you can uh, combine your combos and your force, uh, your lightsaber and your force powers together to come up with some really mean looking combos and grapples and throws. It's quite impressive. Level designs are really good as well. Uh, some of these levels look and feel amazing when you're playing through them. Uh, obviously most of this one, that, well all of this you're going to see is based on this, this star base of sorts. Again, tearing through some doors. So this was, um, this was a really big, really big thing on this coming at first launch. I believe, I don't know if it still is, but at one point this was the fastest selling Star Wars game of all times. In the first month, month of release or so, it sold over a million copies, which is fairly impressive. Oh yeah, I know today you see these, um, uh, the big publishers and that, they expect to get the 5 million sales on video games, these unrealistic targets, but this did really well for its time. Might not hit the 5 million mark, but I think a million in one month is amazing for a Star Wars game, because historically Star Wars games have never been the biggest sellers, and some of them have been pretty poor games, but LucasArts did really well with this one. 
a really good, uh, really good job on developing this game. Have I got lost again? It appears so. Oh, I'm just looking. Maybe there's um, hidden holocrons. I believe they're called throughout the game. So there's so many in each level. With these holocrons, you can unlock your skills, level up quicker. You can also find different colour lightsaber, uh, crystals, different properties, uh, and sometimes unlock new suits as well. The only thing is, I'd pretty much had this game completed and got all the suits and all that lot. I know I needed a few more holocrons when I lost all my saved game data, transferring over to a new Xbox. So I had to start this from scratch for this uh, for this kind of look back, real quick look. The Star Wars week, otherwise I would have been able to show you some of the new, um, some of the different costumes and lightsaber crystals and effects they have, and so on and so forth. But I lost all the data. Oh, there's another holocron you see me finding there. As I was saying, I lost all the data, so I'm afraid you're stuck with just the the beginning part of the game. But you should get the general gist of what the game's like from this. And uh, throughout the game, there's some really huge combat scenes. Uh, not only boss fights, but there are times where you are literally doing things like pulling a. I think they're called uh, Star Destroyers? Imperial Star Destroyers? Pulling them from the sky and crushing them. You can crush TIE Fighters, Attack Walkers. Uh, there's proper epic Jedi battles. You know, lightsaber upon lightsaber. Force power against force power. They do. They, which they make look really impressive. Really, I've gone uh, all out with the artwork and visual style on this game. See some of the some of the combat can get pretty intense with loads of stormtroopers or rebel alliance fighters and troops and you name it, they're in here. Uh, some of the DLC which has come out uh, came out for this placed you on Endor. Uh, in kind of like an alternate universe where Luke Skywalker had died and or you'd killed Luke Skywalker and you were sent after Leia. At this point in this parallel universe Leia had developed her Jedi powers so she'd become a powerful Jedi and you were hunting her down and killing Ewoks and all sorts. It was quite awesome. Just the thought of going around and booting Ewoks into the into trees and things like that was really uh, really good fun. Carrying on with the uh, combat here, making my way through the station, taking on rebel troops. I'm throwing that one halfway across the uh, the level. See the the aim of trying to avoid the tie fighters, which I'm not doing too uh, too good at. Anyway, we have another holocron. We get bonus force points for that, which obviously build up your level. And you can see in the top left hand corner, there's two bars up there. You've got the green bar, which is your health, and the blue bar, which is your force powers. Obviously, using your force powers uses up this bar, and once it's expleted, you have to wait for it to uh, recharge again before you can use your force powers. But you never kind of really feel restricted with that, though. I mean, there wasn't many times where you'd run out of force powers and find yourself a bit stuck. Uh, you did a bit with the lightning, you could just keep the lightning going constantly until you ran out of force powers, but usually long before that the people had died, you were electrocuted anyway, unless it was one of the, the bigger units or a boss. Me taking my uh, abuse out on a little R2 unit. So yeah, as you can see, pretty much as it's gone on, this was Star Wars The Force Unleashed. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out the other videos in the Star Wars week as well as the other features we've got on the website at crazyhorsegaming.co.uk. Also, don't forget to check out the Gamer Kitten forums at www.gamerkitten.com. Again, thanks for watching and I'll catch you all later. Bye!